Good morning, folks. A plasma filament stood up and did some cartwheels on the northeastern limb in the hours following yesterday's news, a not-so-tiny dancer whose leap would have cleared five Earths stacked together. Let's come over to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star were relatively calm. We got the big coronal hole departing, nothing really ejecting, but we do spot a plasma filament out ahead of the dancing marvel we saw to start. This guy survived, crossing the launch pad and will face Earth over the coming two days. Eyes on him for eruptive behavior. And you can borrow some of the focus you'd have otherwise had on solar flares because there aren't any. Lone sunspots on the disk are hard to see unless you zoom way in. These are not going to fire in any configuration like this one. Solar wind, once again the most relevant bit of telemetry with a slight re-rise of speed into a steady stream that has caused the reverberation storms to pick back up this morning. They're not major, and this is what you'd expect given such a massive coronal hole the solar wind's going to endure. Continuing our note from yesterday, bottom left, in comes the southern opening coronal hole. We've still got one more CME coupling potential today, and in addition to reminding you to check our Twitter feed for the full alert maps, one of the areas that may not be out of the woods yet is Italy. Okay, a 5.8 yesterday was smaller than the damaging quake, and yes, we expect aftershocks. But a 5.8 really isn't an aftershock of a 6.1, and aftershocks usually hit the same place at a similar depth. Folks, the damaging quake was shallow, and so are the foreshocks and aftershocks. The 5.8 was deep, off the location, and may be reason to keep an eye open a bit longer. Rough bit of weather in Africa, Egypt with quite a number dead from flood effects, especially in areas with poor water infrastructure. Top news today is about merging stars and super flares. Scientists say binaries merge to create a fast-spinning pumpkin star with 4,000 times the x-rays of our sun, which is equal to about x10,000 solar flares, which would kill everything in the inner solar system. Swarm has now reported that in addition to the expected GPS signal issues when crossing from day to night or night to day, the satellite has registered five GPS signal losses in its short life due to solar storm effects on our magnetosphere. We're going to discuss this and other great topics today on our podcast, Fly on the Wall, including how Discover may be in big trouble in its first few months of operation, recognition of the huge solar shift that took place in just the last decade, and a major polar vortex concern for the United States. Horrible winters are about to get even worse. Lastly, folks, VIP tickets are gone for observing the frontier. The difference was that VIP got guaranteed seating, an additional gift at the door, and access to the very last dinner Sunday night. There are just under 100 tickets left for general admission, which gets you all the presentations, all the hangouts, both breakfasts, etc. It's all on there. Weekly podcast coming up in just a few hours. We've got pressure and radar forecasts here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.